Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, good evening. Also, I pray everybody had a good day today. I pray you were able to get out and enjoy the lovely weather that we had on today. Uh, so let's open up with the word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, God, for a beautiful day today. We thank you for your grace and your mercy that's new on this day. We thank you, God, for your unconditional love. We thank you, God, for your hand of protection that was upon each and every one of us today. We thank you, God, for this Zoom technology. We thank you, God, for your word. We thank you, God, for the message and the lesson that's going to go forth on this evening. We ask and pray, God, that you would allow our hearts and minds to be ready to receive what you have for us on this evening through your word. Help us, God, to be transformed by your word. We thank you, we love you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. So bear with me as we go through these announcements for this evening. Um, first announcement is this Saturday, October 26th, uh, Metro will be hosting the uh, Soul Shop Workshop for Black Churches. That will be this Saturday at Metro from 8.30 to 4.30 p.m. It's a free workshop, and it's led by Minister Wanda Fista and Reverend um, Frozine Reese Smith. Um, so if you are interested in attending, um, please reach out to uh, Minister Wanda Fista, or you can contact Missy uh, Stolfi at M-S-T-O-L-F-I at AFSP.org. Um, registration is required, but the workshop is free. Lunch and materials will be provided. That's this Saturday of September, excuse me, October 26th. This Sunday, um, October 27th, during our 10 a.m. worship service, we will be going pink or going purple in honor of Breast Cancer Awareness Month and Domestic Violence Awareness. So if you are um, able to, please show your support by wearing pink or purple. If you don't have those colors, still show up to church. But um, we would like for everyone to, if they can, wear pink or purple to show support for breast cancer awareness and domestic violence awareness. Also this Sunday, immediately following our 1030 worship service, the Metro will be going to Mount Zion Church. Uh, where we will celebrate uh, Reverend Jamel K. Robinson's third pastoral anniversary. A pastor will be preaching, the choir will be singing, the ushers will be in place. So immediately following the 10 a.m. service on this Sunday, October 27th, um, everybody will go to uh, Mount Zion uh, Church for the past third pastoral anniversary. So please come and show support if you're able to. Uh, next Thursday, October 31st, uh, Metro will be having um, Hallelujah Glow Night. It'll be from 6 to 8 p.m. at the church. The event is open to all youth ages 5 to 17. So please come out and support and have fun and fellowship. Uh, costumes are encouraged, but please um, remember nothing scary. So that's next Thursday, October 31st, 6 to 8 at Metro. And then our final announcement is um, Saturday, November 16th at 1 p.m. Metro will be having a Men and Women's Day Fashion Show luncheon. Um, so please come out and enjoy an exciting showcase of style, delicious food, and a great time with your church family. The cost to attend is $25, and you can register at the Welcome Desk on Sunday. So that's um, a fashion show luncheon, Saturday, November 16th at Metro at 1 p.m. And so that's it for our announcements on this evening. Please um, keep in prayer everyone who um, all about sick and shut in. Um, please keep our pastor and first lady lifted in prayer and anyone that you know of that is in need of prayer. Um, please uh, lift them up in prayer um, as well. So we will pause at this time and give everyone a chance to give. There are a few ways to give. Um, you can um, do it through text to give, um, metrobaptistalbany.com. You can drop it off at the church, 105 Second Street, or you can mail it in, 105 Second Street. Um, please remember that Cash App is still down at the moment, so um, you can just use the other methods to give. So we'll pause and give everyone a chance to give at this time. Father God, we thank you for every gift that has been given. We thank you, God, for giving us something to give. And if we didn't have anything to give, we thank you, God, um, just for giving us the spirit to want to give. Um, we pray and ask, God, that every gift will be used to glorify your name and edify your kingdom. Thank you, God, for being so good and for every good and perfect gift we know comes from you. We thank you again. We love you as always, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. And so now we will get ready for this evening's um, lesson. 
we are, are blessed to have Reverend um, Gomes giving us our lesson on this evening. Um, so uh, I'll turn it over to you, Reverend Gomes. Thank you. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Everyone hearing me clearly? Just, okay. Yes. Um, again, welcome to Metro U. This is our third lesson um, today, and we're going to be dealing with uh, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. But let's have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time, and we ask now, Lord, you may open our minds and our hearts that we may receive from you what you have for us today according to your word. Again, bless your word into our hearts as we glorify your name. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. As I said, this is our second, uh, third lesson uh, in your syllabus, page 7. Uh, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. We went through the first lesson that asked the question, who is the Holy Spirit? And uh, we, were, we learned that it's a person. Um, then we, we did the second week, we did the, uh, the character of the Holy Spirit. And uh, we learned it, uh, it, he is essentially holy in character and he wants to make us a holy people as well. And uh, today we're going to be doing with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And that word speaks for itself when it says indwelling. Uh, it means something on the inside. And uh, if, if we think about it, when we receive Christ, we receive the Holy Spirit that comes into us and dwell in us and uh, works uh, in us and through us as well. So today, as we look at the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we're going to look at uh, Romans chapter 8, verses uh, 5 through 13. And it's broken up into three sections, three sections, five through uh, Romans chapter 8, 5 through 13. And the first section is verses 5 through 7. And uh, if you have your outline there, Number one says the Holy Spirit wants to control the mind of the believer. You can fill in that in your, in your uh, outline there. The Holy Spirit wants to control the mind of the believer. Uh, A, it says the error of the carnal mind. And uh, if you look at Romans 8, 5 through 7, uh, we can uh, learn that it speaks about uh, the contrast between living according to the flesh, which is our sinful nature, and living according to the spirit, which is uh, God's guidance. And um, Romans uh, 8 and 5 through 7, I'm using the New International Version. If I can just read it uh, quickly for you, it says, those who live according to the flesh have their mindset on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. In other words, we're talking about controlling the mind. It wants to control the mind. The mind is the, the way you think, the way you reason, and the way you, you process thoughts and, 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 and ideas. And, and God, uh, the Holy Spirit, wants to control the way you think because the Bible says, as a man thinketh, so is he. And a lot of times we think things that are not godly. And I, if we want to be true to ourselves, sometimes we, we think things that we shouldn't be thinking. And the indwelling of the Holy Spirit wants to help us not to think those ways, not to think ungodly. Because uh, it says, let this mind be in you or in us. That was also in Christ Jesus. He's trying to help us to have a Christ-like mind. So when he wants to control the mind is uh, the way you think the way you reason, and the way you process the ideas and the thoughts. Um, it says, uh, B says, the enmity uh, of the carnal mind. And, and that word enmity is speaking about being hostile, hatred, ill will 
towards God. It's, it is saying that when you when you dwell in the flesh, it's uh, it create this hostility, so to speak, that you don't want to do anything uh, uh, what God is asking us to do. So it says it brings us an enmity with God. It, it brings us like an enemy with God. And um, if we just go through quickly, I want to just go through these verses. These are three verses here, verses five, six, and seven. And verses five, uh, it, it, it gives us the contrast of two ways of living. It says, those who live according to the flesh are focused on selfish and worldly de desires, while those who live according to the spirit focus on spiritual things and align themselves with God's will. That's verse five, uh, ex explaining what verse five is saying. And then verse six is saying, uh, it highlights the outcome of the mindset. It's life governed by fleshly desires leads to death which is spiritual death and separation from God. In other words, if the Holy Spirit is not indwelling in you, if you don't have the Spirit, the Bible says you are none of His, which means you're none of God. It means you're separated from Him. You're none of His. He says, uh, as I said um, in verse uh, 6, uh, it says spiritual death and separation from God, while a life governed by the Spirit brings life and peace, both in this life and in eternity. Now, as we all know as, as Christians, that this life or death is not the end. Actually, death is the entrance into God's presence. Death is just a, 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 a way of moving from this earthly realm to the heavenly realm. So when we hear about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, it says, while uh, those who are uh, controlled by the flesh uh, is, separate, is being separated from God, while those who are controlled or governed by the Spirit brings life and peace both in this life and in eternity. Uh, verse 7 says, the mind controlled by the flesh is hostile to God and cannot obey his law. In other words, he's saying that the mind just blank itself out from listening or, or wanting to hear anything about God. It says the mind controlled by flesh is hostile to God and cannot obey his laws because it is rebellious and driven by self-centeredness. It, oppose, it opposed to God's authority and righteousness. So, when we are controlled by the flesh, as, as I said before, uh, the verse that says, let this mind be in you. And, and, and this is what the Holy Spirit wants to do to us, is to help us to cultivate a Christ-like mind and to not to follow after the things of the flesh. Uh, overall, this, these few verses encourage believers to live by the Spirit, finding true life and peace rather than being driven by sinful desires that leads to, uh, to destruction. And, and then if you look at number two, number two says the Holy Spirit wants to control the motives. You can fill that in in, the, in, the, in your, your lesson outline there. Uh, the Holy Spirit wants to control the motives of the believers. And I'm, I'm dealing there with Romans 8, 8 and 9. And it says to be in the flesh is to be motivated by the desires of the flesh. But to be in the spirit is to be motivated by the spirit. Simple. The motives. Uh, the motives are, are, are the way you, you act. The goal or object of a person's action. And the Holy Spirit wants to, to control uh, the way we act. And we know sometimes uh, the way we act is, you know, people have to question us sometimes as Christians. And says, are you a Christian? Because the way we act, the way we behave. You know, we can, we can do that good in church. We can be the, the best Christians in church. But then when we are faced with certain situations outside of church, how we behave, how we act, uh, our motives are being questioned because of how we behave and act. And the indwelling of the Holy Spirit wants to help us to act the way the Spirit would have us act. And that's why it says, 
to be controlled or motivated by the desires of the flesh uh, is is uh, is is uh, is to be uh, is to be motiv motivated by the desires of the flesh. But to be in the spirit is to be motivated by the spirit uh, uh, of God. So verses eight and nine it kind of discusses the distractions between those who live according to the flesh and those who live according to the spirit. Explaining how one's relationship with God is defined by being led by his spirit. And uh, as we look at verse 8, it says, Those who are, are in the spirit are in those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. Cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. As I said before, the, I think the King James Version says, you're none of his. So in, it, he's saying it, Paul is saying plain here that if the spirit of Christ does not dwell in you, then you do not belong to Christ. And I know it's, it's a lot of uh, questions and a lot of uh, ifs about the Holy Spirit because we don't fully understand how the Spirit operates. But the one thing is, if you remember, when Christ was leaving, he told the disciples he will not leave them comfortless. He will send them a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, which will guide them or teach them all truths. So we as Christians, we are still being taught the truth of God. We are still being taught how to behave as Christians, how to live as Christians. So in verse 8 and 9 of uh Romans chapter 8 here, uh, Paul is trying to tell us those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. If we dwell in the flesh, we are uh, 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 um, in opposition to God. You, however, who are in the realm of the spirit are being led and being controlled by the spirit. Uh, these verses emphasize that those who live in the realm of the, of the flesh focus on sinful worldly desires and cannot please God. Living in the flesh means being controlled by sinful human nature, which opposes God's will and is incapable of submitting to his, his commands. It, it, these are some strong words. It's saying if, if we don't live in the spirit and we allow the, 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 the world or the fleshly desires to to kind of uh, control us. And that's what we're talking about, controlling. It controls us. We are separating ourselves from God. We are separating ourselves from God. These verses are said, uh, pointing out that uh, a life pleasing to God is only possible through the indwelling. And that's what our lesson is trying to tell us about, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, uh, marking the transformation from living by sinful desires or living according to the flesh and aligning ourselves with God's will. It emphasizes the crucial role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the Christian. In other words, the, the Spirit wants to, uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says, He wants to quicken us. In other words, He wants to make us alive through the Holy Spirit because we were dead in trespasses and in sin. And through the Holy Spirit, he quickens us. He made us alive through the Holy Spirit and through, actually through his death, burial, and resurrection. And um, thirdly, uh, this, the, the part three of our lesson today, it says, the Holy Spirit wants to control the members of the believers. The members of the believers. And that's some verses... Uh, 10 through 13. And um, Paul is, is, is saying here that um, he wants, to, the Holy Spirit wants to control our members. And our members, we're talking our, our whole body, so to speak. Our whole body. And we can get into that because I, uh, Romans 12 and 1 uh, says uh, we need to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. 
then it says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the reunion of your mind. This is exactly what Paul is trying to tell us here, that if our mind is not uh, transformed, but conformed to the flesh, conformed to the things of the flesh, then we are at enmity with God, then God is not in us, the Spirit is not in us. But he says, if we present our bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service, and be transformed. In other words, we're talking about, as we mentioned before, the Holy Spirit wants to transform our mind, the way we think, the way we behave, the way we live, the way we do stuff, the way we treat others. That's what the, the Spirit wants to do. It wants to change us, transform us by renewing our mindset, by renewing the way we do things, the way we behave, and the way we think. So um, uh, in, in this section here, it says the Holy Spirit wants to control the, mem the members of the believers. It wants um, complete residence. And as sometimes, some uh, while back, I, I shared this, I think, when I was, when I was preaching, I think, or when I was teaching, um, God wants to dwell in our whole being, our, our entire body. He wants to control our arms, our legs, our mouth, our eyes, our ears, everything he wants to do. And I, I refer it to like in the home. You know, some of us want God to be in our living room, but not in our bedroom. Some of God want, uh, want God to be uh, in the den, but not in the kitchen. God wants to be in every room. He wants to be in control of everything. And I, I think um, we heard a story about the, the guy who was driving and uh, along the way and he, he saw Jesus and he stopped and he says, well, look, you know, Jesus, let me give you a ride. And Jesus refused to get in the car. Uh, and he says, come on, Jesus, come. You could come in the front seat next to me. And Jesus refused to get in the car. And he says, Jesus, why you don't want to get in the car? And Jesus says, if I don't drive, I don't ride. So in other words, he wants to be in control. The Holy Spirit, that's the, 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 the motive and that's the aim of the Holy Spirit is to control our entire being. But that's when it says he wants to be in control of our members. And verses 10 through 13, um, give us a, a quick a quick uh, explanation. It says this focuses on the transformative power of the Holy Spirit in the believers. And, and I want to just stop there for a minute because the Holy Spirit just don't work and stop working. It just don't come in and work and stop. It's a continuous process. It's continually working on us. It says it's a transform the transformative power of the Holy Spirit in the believers. We're, uh, contrasting the consequences of living according to the flesh with the new life that comes through the spirit. So he's trying to change us and he's trying to work on us. And I, I know many of us can say for a fact that God is not true with us yet. He is still working us. The spirit is still working us. There are some th still some things in our lives that uh, we want God to really uh, eradicate. We want God to take away. And, and there are some things that we kind of hold on to. We find it hard to let go of. And the Spirit is saying that we got to let go of it and let God take control. It's like we said, let go and let God. Um, verse 10, it says that the verse acknowledges the reality that our physical bodies are still subject to death as a result of sin. Because of sin, our bodies are, 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 are subject to the physical death. Uh, but it emphasizes that the Spirit gives life to us spiritually because of righteousness. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The righteousness is the one given by Christ. Even though we live in a mortal body, the Spirits bring uh, new life within us. And um, at funerals, uh, like just uh, uh, on Monday... Uh, when, when I did a funeral, and we always hear this, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. It, it means that, as I said before, death has no sting. The grave has no victory over us because we believe in Christ. The Holy Spirit is going to transform us, is going to take us, and the Holy Spirit uh, will never die. The Holy Spirit lives on and on and on. So verse 11 says, Paul encourages believers by reminding them that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives in us or lives in them also. 
This means that the Spirit not only gives spiritual life, but will also raise their mortal bodies to new life in the future resurrection. Because Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. So he's, even though we die, he says, even though you die, those who believe in him shall live again. And those who live and believe in him shall never die. In other words, the spirit is going to renew us. The spirit is going to make us, is going to quicken us, make us alive. <coughs> Excuse me. So as Paul is encouraging to uh, remind us that the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is in us. And, and, and sometimes I think maybe we think about that. We think that maybe it was a, it's a different spirit. No, there's only one spirit. One spirit is the Holy Spirit. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, which is the, the Holy Spirit, is also going to raise us, uh, raise us up in the, the, the resurrection. Then verse 12, uh, verse 12 uh, explains that the believers are no longer obligated to live according to the flesh, which is their sinful nature. Since the spirit now lives in them, they are not bound to follow the desires and temptation of the flesh. Again, we come back to the part where the spirit is trying to help us to overcome the power of the flesh. And I guess you heard this as well. It's like two dogs fighting in us and they ask the question, which one wins? And we always say the one you feed the most. That's the one who's going to win. So if you feed yourself with uh, fleshly desires, uh, earthly things, that's who you're going to be. But it, there's danger in that because if you follow the realm of the flesh or allow the flesh to control you, the thoughts of the flesh to control you, it says you'll be separated from God. But if you feed yourself with spiritual things, with godly things, it says the spirit lives in you and even though you go through the rough time, the Bible says, even though you die, yet shall he live. It means the spirit will quicken you, will make you alive again. Verse 13 uh, says, believes, uh, uh, Paul delivers a strong warning and a promise in, in verse 13. If people, uh, if people live according to the flesh, they will die. And this is serious because it says both physically and spiritually if you live according to the flesh you will die both physically and spiritually but if they allow the spirit to lead them in putting to death the sinful deeds of the body they will live and this refer to the spirit spiritual life now and eternal life to come because the bible says he in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his own begun so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And as I was preparing this lesson, I look at John 3, 16 and the word when it says uh, perish, I, I, I think about it as dying without Christ. If you, you perish without him, he says, if any man believes in him, he will not perish but will have everlasting life. You will not be separated from God. You will not be... Uh, 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 alienated from God or you will not be like an, an opposition to God but he says if you believe and that is the, the, the important part there if you believe you shall not perish but you shall have everlasting life so uh, Paul is saying here in verse 13 again this refers to the spiritual life now and eternal life to come that's why as the believers we, uh, 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 we are saying that once we believe in Christ yes I think many of us, uh, we don't want to die. We all want to go to heaven, but we don't want to die. But that is sure. And that is going to come. And bless, bless those who might live long enough to see the rapture. But the thing about it is that when you die, if you die in the Lord, if you die in the Lord from henceforth of the Spirit, it's, it's going to transport you from this realm, from this this body, this this physical, this this, if I may say, carnal body is going to be done away with. And we're going to put on what is we call mortal or immor uh, immor put off mortal and put on immortality. We're going to uh, take take off a, a carnal, the, the carnal mind, and uh, we, we're going to put on a new mind. Uh, we're going to put off corruption and we, we, uh, we're going to put on incorruption. 
So we, uh, we're going to go to that in, in a few minutes. But I just want to remind you that Paul is trying to remind us when he says um, in, in, in verse 13, uh, it refers to the life now, the life we live now, and the life to come. Uh, in, in, in summary, these verses highlight the power of the Holy Spirit in bringing life to the believers, both spiritually and eventually physically, while calling them to reject the sinful tendency of the flesh and live in the Spirit's power. It's a reminder of the believer's new identity and the hope of the resurrection. So in other words, it's encouraging us to reject the sinful tendencies. And, and you know, it's sometimes he says, it's easier said than done. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm aware and I'm, I'm sure that God knows our, 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 our minds. He knows our desires. He knows what we want to do. He knows our strength and he knows our weaknesses. And a lot of times, if we allow the spirit to dwell in us, dwell in us, the Bible tells me that he's going to give you the strength you need to overcome. And you know what he says? He says, in this world, you will have trials and tribulation, but be of good courage because he has overcome the world. And because he overcame, we too will be overcomers. And that's only because if we have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit in us. That is what our lesson is teaching us uh, this evening about the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. And um, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that we're not going to make mistakes. It doesn't mean that we become a perfect people. No, we are not because the Bible tells us none of us are perfect. But through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are striving to attain perfection. As we always say, God is not true with me yet. But when he gets true with me, we shall all come forth as pure gold. And that is what the holy dwelling of the Holy Spirit does for us. It is working. And I'm saying this because right now it's working on me. And I'm sure, I'm sure that it's also working uh, in you. It's working in me and it's working in you. And it works from the inside out because you can look at somebody or somebody you know, or even yourself, people can say to you, there's something different about you. We used to do before, you don't do it anymore. And I, I, I normally say, praise God for that because it's not my doing, but it's the Holy Spirit working in me trying to make me the person God wants me to be. And none of us, including myself, we are not there yet. But soon we will be. Soon we will be. And then um, in, in, in section three, it says, a mortal and immortality. And if, if uh, someone could just uh, turn to, uh, it's, it's 1 Corinthians 15, we can turn there and we can... Um, we can read 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, um, verses uh, 53 and 54. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses uh, 53 and uh, 54. And we get a sense of what the Spirit, uh, indwelling of the Holy Spirit, is all about. Um, 53 and 54 says, it's, as I said before, um, let me just read from verse 50, just for connection's sake, from verse 50. And a lot of times this is used at funerals, but then we can also look at it and see uh, the, 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 what Paul uh, is writing here to the Corinthian church and telling them about the spirit. It says, now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God nor does corruption inherit in corruption. He says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. And verse 53 says, for this corruptible, 
must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. And as we go on, you know, it says, oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, where is thy victory? So we are talking about the mortal and the immortal here is saying that if anybody be in Christ, if he says he or she is a new creation. But this is what happens when you die, when you, you when the spirit takes over and dwells in you. When you die, it says you will put off mortal and put on immortality. You will put off corruption and put on incorruption. And then, as we know, once we live in Christ, death has no power over us because Christ defeated death and the grave when he rose from the dead. He defeated uh, death and the grave. So that's 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 15, verses 53 through um, to 54. And then the next, the next section says, B says, the believer's body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17 states, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defile, defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy. And it asks the question, which temple are you? Are you? It says, do you not know that you are the temple of God? And that the spirit of God dwells in you. In other words, it's kind of giving us a little warning here. Be careful how you treat your body. Be careful what you put in your body. A lot of times people say, not what goes into you defiles you, but what comes out of you. But sometimes we be caref got to be careful what we put into our bodies. We can't want to put uh, things that are not good for us into our bodies and expect good things to come out from it. Simple as, simple as that. If we want good things, let's put in good things. We want to live by the Spirit, let the Spirit help us to do the things that are right. We need to feed ourselves the things of the Spirit. And then uh, the same 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Chapter 6. And verses 19 and 20. 19 and 20. 6, 19 and 20. It says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own, for you are bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. It says again, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So, it, Paul, again, is encouraging us to let our bodies be subject to the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Again, like Romans 12 and 1 says, to present your bodies to God, to present it as, as a living sacrifice to God, that the Spirit of God may dwell in us. And yes, again, I'm saying we are not there yet. But if we want to be uh, true and honest to God, we need to ask him to allow, continue to allow his spirit to work on us and to change the things or remove the things that is hindering him from having total indwelling, total indwelling in our, in, in our lives, in our, our body, so to speak. Because uh, we know that there's a saying that we are the world's Bible. The world reads us. They, they know who, you, especially if they know you're a Christian. And the moment you do something contrary to your Christian walk, they can point it out. And yes, none of us, again, none of us are, are, are you know, 
are perfect and we, we don't make mistakes. But I wish and I pray today that as we, we finish off this lesson today, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, we may continue to ask God to continue to, to show us or to remove the things that is preventing him from having complete, complete control of our body because those are some of the things that comes from the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It says the Holy Spirit wants to control our minds, it wants to control our motives, and it wants to control our members, which is telling me, and I know it's telling you as well, it wants to have complete control of our entire being. And again, I wish and pray that as a lesson is entitled The Indwelling of the Holy Spirit, may God continue to allow His Spirit to dwell in us and to richly change us daily as we live his life so this is our lesson for today thank you everyone for listening may god continue to bless you bless your household for everyone that's on this uh call today uh may christ be the head of the home and the holy spirit continue to lead direct and guide you amen amen and amen don't forget please remember that this coming sunday uh Pastor Johnson and the Metropolitan family will be going to worship at Mount Zion for Pastor Robinson's third pastoral anniversary. So please keep that in mind and I'll continue that uh, as we continue to walk this Christian life, we may allow God's spirit to lead and direct us. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you again for this time we spent around your word. We thank you for the lessons you have taught us. And oh Lord, help us to surrender Help us to surrender, not only our, our body, our arms, our legs, our eyes, but our entire body that is surrendered to you, that you may be able to dwell in us. And not only now, but continue to dwell in us, working on us and making us the persons you want us, the Christians you want us to be. And Lord, again, help us to have a Christ-like mind, even as the word says, let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Bless every home that is represented on this call right now. Continue to watch over them. Continue to provide them. Supply their needs according to your riches and glory. Those who need comfort at this time, Lord, be a comfort all around them every day. For those who are in need, supply their needs. For those who are sick, we pray for healing for them as well. For those who are bereaved, we pray for your comfort. For those who might be weak in some area of their lives, give them the strength they need. And, oh, Lord, as we move from this place, but never from your presence, bless us all, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Good night, everyone.